Good morning. Good morning. Happy December. We are here. Hallelujah and glory to God. Thank God for we are we are almost at the end of the year and um, praying that we've accomplished much and uh, fulfilling the plan of God and the will of God for our lives. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to pop on to my Facebook Live because there are plenty of them going on. But I appreciate you watching and sharing and all of that. And happy birthday to my only oldest sister. Happy birthday, Catherine. So glad you were born. You were a blessing to us. Thank you so much. And thank you all for popping on. We want to talk about, I want to talk for the next, I have 20 days in the month of December. And I want to share with you some, some points um, that are takeaways from the entire year. So I want to start this morning talking about Esther and um, how one of the things that we need to do to have prepared for our next and to get us to where we need to be is uh, let's go ahead and make a conscious decision that I am here for this season, that he designed me for purpose. And just when we look in the book of Esther and understand her life, we understand that Esther, though her beginnings may have been um, troublesome, so to speak, we understand that she was, she was there Oh, she was designed for this. She was designed for this. Sometimes it feels like what we're going through is, uh, is all about um, just what we're doing. But you have purpose. You have purpose. Uh, there was a movie some time ago, and I've mentioned it before, called August Rush, I believe it is. And I'm going to tell you several points I want to make. But um, in this movie in particular, he talked about this little boy who um, just figured he had a purpose in life. Good morning, Tatiana, Kendall, and Ava. Hey, um, Trenton and Titus. I forgot. Y'all, I forgot the other day to pray for the call the names of the children. God bless everybody. And um, in August Rush, he talked about how he just felt like his life was meant for so much more and he didn't know what it was but he and his friend would always go swimming and they would do a challenge with his uh, with they were the same age i believe but one was short and he just did not grow good morning i'm sorry and um he just always felt there was a purpose and um and y'all should watch it's really a good movie i take away things probably that people miss but that's what I saw. But anyway, so they were on this trip and the bus ended up in the river. And August Rush, I believe the name of the movie is, he said, this is it. This is what I was, this is what I, my purpose is. My purpose, because he was small enough to get into the bus and save the children. He saved everybody. He got them out and everybody else was afraid, but he said, I can hold my breath under the water longer than anyone else. He didn't know why that was always a challenge for them, but it was. And we understand he, in looking at this movie that his purpose was fulfilled and um, it ended up that he died. It, he did. I'm just giving you all the plot. Y'all just go watch the movie. But he died, but he died knowing he had fulfilled his purpose. He had saved many people. And when we live without purpose, just like Esther, and some of you, if you looked on my page this morning, I posted, I, well, I did not. I responded to somebody's post and um, they put a post that said, is this all there is? And it was a little graphic uh, that had a little wave zigzag. And it was that they came in through school, went through uh, a job, and then they virtually died. And is this all there is? Without purpose for your life, it is. Esther, understand that Esther was an orphan. She did not have her mother. Her, that's why her uncle Mordecai took her in because she had no family. And she probably thought, thank God for uncle Mordecai. My life has changed and, you know, I'm better. But that wasn't all there was to it. God has a way of taking those things in your life and making them a blessing, not just for you, but for others. Sometimes we live unto ourselves. That's a life without purpose. You are designed for more. You are destined for more. I'm not saying you're going to rescue people out of a, of a, of a, of a bus that's in the water. I'm not saying that. Nor am I saying you're going to be an Esther who's going to rescue and speak up for a nation of people. But wherever we are and whatever we're destined to do, 
God's purpose is the one we want to be fulfilled in our lives. We don't want to live to ourselves. People who stay in that little process of, you know, you're born, you go to school, you get a job, you die. You're born, you get a job, you get, I mean, we understand that life is more than that. And I thought, my life's not like that. I trust God with my life. Therefore, I have joy. I have peace. I have purpose. And when the, the scripture tells us that many of the plans are in a man's heart, but we understand that it is the purpose of the Lord that shall prevail. Isn't that what we all yearn for? Man was created. And when I look at some of the, the millennials and the Gen Xers, and they don't seem to have purpose for their lives because they're looking for it everywhere else. The other thing, there's a deception that comes with sin. That somehow we believe that we should have a life of glamour. We should, Hollywood has deceived us into believing that if you don't have that, the, the parties all the time and you know, 10 or 15 cars in, in the garage, when we, we don't have a bunch of friends at our house and uh, we don't fly around the country, I want to fly to Paris for dinner and have my own private jet. If I don't live that life, then I don't have purpose. My life is full of gloom and despair. You know, I don't know very many people with that. And we can't measure purpose and joy and peace by someone else's life. We need to know God's purpose. You need to know God's purpose for you. I look at the life of, of, um, of um, Jonathan Wesley and Charles Wesley. Their mother, Susanna, had 10 or 15 kids, something outrageous. And she had 10 or 15 kids, a bunch of children. But she taught her children about the Lord. When she would pray... Even with all those kids, and that's why I can't figure out how we struggle when we only have three or four kids, one or two, she would pray. She said she taught them that when her apron was over her head, she was praying. And they didn't disturb her. Listen, we must understand that we are designed for purpose, not for ourselves, but to give out to others. When we die, one thing Miles Monroe always said is that he wanted to die empty. Because then you sow seeds into the lives of others. You sow, you'll sow seeds into the lives of other people. And when you sow those seeds, there's a harvest that comes back. Those boys accomplished great things for the kingdom of God. They started a movement. They started a movement that impacted a nation. Did Susanna do it? No, but she prepared warriors. She prepared soldiers. She, she prepared sons and daughters who would move for the kingdom of God. It's not just about you. It's about you getting what you need and sowing because we have purpose. You have purpose. When we look at the life of Esther, I'm sorry. When we look at the life of Esther, we understand that Esther was content to be with Mordecai. But Mordecai thought you should do more. So when the king sent out his decree and he bet God made room for Esther. God will make room for you. All right, that's another subject, but you need to make a conscious decision that I'm here by God's design. I am here for God's purpose. And God made room for her. God made room for Esther because God knew, just like we discussed earlier, uh, when we talked about uh, Joseph, Joseph, and we understood the process that he took, the process Esther took, she wasn't there in the king's court just for us, for herself. She wasn't there just to give her life meaning. When we live to ourselves, when we live for our own benefit, what can I get for myself? What can I do to enhance my own? And I'm, I'm, I'm all for you living well and you being well, but you must understand that there's more to life than just what benefits you. What are you giving away? What are you sowing into the lives of others? How are you encouraging others? How are you trying to mentor others? How are you trying to set an example of your own life so that someone else can live? Is it work? Absolutely. But is it worth it? By all means. You are, make a conscious decision before you get to December 31st. 2020, my vision is clearer. 2020, my life will, will have meaning and purpose. And I'm going to have a conscious decision that whatever comes in next year, in the next 24 hours, I am here by God's design. And whatever happens that's contrary to being positive, God is ordering my steps. He is able to take those things that are not so positive and turn them around and make them a blessing. God took Esther's life. She was an orphan. She was taken in. She was one of the women who God gave favor. 
Her uncle Mordecai, Mordecai taught her, Lord, help somebody to teach our children. He taught her how to maneuver her way. When she went there, she came, became, she got in contact with the eunuch who had been there all the time. And she did whatever he said. Her spirit was calm. She wasn't just, she wasn't just trying to, to push her way forward. She was letting the Lord order her steps. She did everything that he told her to do. He told her what the king liked. He told her things that other women, because they wouldn't sit still long enough, that they would know, she would know what to do. When she was prepared and they spent months and may have been years preparing to go into the king. You're here by God's design. You're here for God's purpose. Did she do practical things? Absolutely. But God was preparing her for her next. All right. So Esther's there in the king's court being prepared to go into the king. When the king saw her, he loved her. Hands down, she was the prettiest woman. Hands down, she was the one who was going to replace Vashti. Understand, God made room for her. Did Vashti do something wrong, per se, that would have gotten her booted out? She did, but I understand it. He was drunk and wanted her beauty, her to bring her beautiful self in the midst of all these drunk men to show herself. But it made room for the woman who was going to come to save the nation. And when the time came for, um, when the decree was made because wicked Haman had didn't like Mordecai and didn't like the Jews, Mordecai had to remind Esther, you're, you're, you're there, but you're not there for you. You're not there for you. You're not there for you. The success you have is not, somebody has to walk in your path. You may be doing X, Y, and Z, but somebody has to follow that path. One of the things I understand as a woman who, who's in ministry is that there are other people who will determine what women in ministry are about by looking at me. I want to make sure that somebody can come behind me. I want to make sure that somebody has an opportunity to get to their next. I don't want to close any doors and neither should you. For the next man, for the next child, you want to make sure that what you're doing is a benefit to someone else. You don't have to go and find them. God will connect us. He will help us to connect with the people who need to be catapulted to their next. And when Esther was thinking, well, I can't go to the king because um, I have, you know, I could, I could get killed. Because she remembered Vashti. That's a, that'll preach right there. She remembered Vashti, who did, who did things that the king had not, uh, that she didn't fulfill the king's request. And she didn't follow the rules, so to speak. So Esther wasn't one of those people, who, I'm not, I'm not going to get in trouble like, like Vashti did. She was going to play it safe. But her uncle Mordecai said, don't you think you're going to escape because you're in the king's court? Don't you think you're going to get away because of you, where you're situated? God has a way of you reminding us that we're not there for our own benefit. But Mordecai told him, how do you know that you're not in the kingdom for such a time as this? And everybody preached that. But for such a time as this, I am here by God's design. I am here for God's purpose. Wherever I am, whatever is going on, even if I created it, God has a way out, a way over, and a way through. He will get me safely through to my next. We can't be afraid to trust God. So Esther said, y'all fast. And my, me and my girls, we're going to fast. And we're going to believe God to order our steps and to give me faith. Well, if I go to him and he extends the golden scepter, then I know I'm okay. And, but Esther wasn't foolish, even though it was a challenge to her. Think about it. Esther went into the king's court he extended the golden scepter to her so she could come because he loved her, even though he had not called for her in a while. It wasn't that he didn't love her. He could have been busy. I don't know what kings do. But the thing was, he did, and all she asked was, I want the king to come to dinner with me and, come and bring Haman. What an innocent thing to do. She, when he got there, he said, what do you want? I'll give you half my kingdom. 
She could have been selfish, still concerned about herself. Give me half the kingdom. Then I can take all my people and we can move to that part of the kingdom. She could have thought that, but that wasn't what God was trying to do. Understand that what she did was she had a plan. God will give you a plan of action. That is one of my favorite phrases. He will give you a plan of action, even if it's to be quiet, to be still, and to know that he is God. She said, well, he said, she said, he said, what do you want? He said, well, I want y'all. She said, I want you to come to dinner tomorrow night too. He said, fine, we're coming. And Haman was ecstatic, not understanding that his days were numbered. She invited him to dinner and Haman decided to show himself. And the king caught him. The king didn't know that she was a Jew, but God gave her a favor and a plan of action. And they devised a plan to save all all of her people. Listen, you are, you need to make a conscious decision that no matter how bad it is and what it looks like, God's hand is on your life. Trust him to order your steps. Trust him to bring you into a wealthy place. Trust him to extend the borders of your tent. Let's, let's just begin now to decide that God's way is the best way. Let's not be deceived into believing that because I don't have X, Y, and Z, that my life is not perfect and complete, that I'm not having wonderful time, and that my life is humdrum and boring. You may not be, you may be in a season where what you should be doing is learning how to fight, learning, getting some tools, getting the word of God inside of you, that you'll have a reservoir to fight with. But if you don't even do that, then you won't be prepared for your next. You won't have a plan of action. He says that I will give you wisdom and the words to say at the right time. God's word will guide you. You will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way walking it. God's plan is better. God's plan is greater. When you don't know K-N-O-W, your purpose, you have no purpose. You feel like you have no purpose. Your, I, your, your outlook becomes dim and dreary and humdrum. But God's plan is always the best thing for us. God's will for us is you can make mistakes. I've made mistakes. But God has a way of getting us to our next. He has a way of turning around those things that are evil and depriving us of good. Remember, that's my definition of evil. Well, it's my pastor's definition of evil. Uh, evil is deprivation of good. Those things that deprive us of the goodness of the Lord. Those things that keep us out of the, the peace of God and the will of God. God is able to take those evil things and turn them around and cause us to be blessed by them. Not necessarily that thing itself, but he will cause goodness to come out of it. Even if it's that we learn something we didn't know before. Even if it's that we now become strong and mighty and we're able to accomplish great things for the kingdom of God. We look in the life of Esther and understand that she grew in her walk with, and the Lord's not mentioned in the book of Esther, but we knew, we know from seeing how God ordered things that God was doing it. I say this often to you, God is strategic. He has a plan for your life. He has a design for you. And the enemy's job is to throw you off, to get you off balance, to make you believe and to think that you have no purpose, that life is as simple as being born, you go to school, you get a job, you die. It's more than that. God sprinkles his purpose all throughout our lives, just like he did Esther. Just like he did Esther. My time is gone. I want to pray. Wow. Wow. I want to pray with you, and I want you to join me in the morning for our point number two. I want to cover the things that the Lord gave me uh, in, uh, in November to cover for the month of December to remind us of God's plan for us. Make a conscious decision today. I'm here by God's design. I am here for God's purpose. The purpose of the Lord prevail in my life. Whatever it is. And if I don't know his purpose, get in his word. He will make his plan plain to us. And the entrance of his word brings light. You don't have any light. Your road is dark and gloomy and filled with despair. Turn on the light. Here it is. Turn it on. Let me turn it around. Turn it on. Turn on the light. The light that's found in the word of God. The entrance of his word gives light. He will light your way and he will light your path. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that your hand is upon us for good and that your glory is being revealed in our lives, that your anointing breaks and destroys every yoke. We thank you that you've given us purpose 
for our lives. Father, those who are filled with despair and depression and heaviness and doubt, Lord, we ask you even now that you would let the light of the glorious gospel shine in their lives. Let, Lord, we thank you that you will cause your light to shine, that they will begin to see your goodness, begin to see your purpose, begin to see your plan, begin to see their next. We bind the spirit of suicide and heaviness during this holiday season for people who begin to feel they don't have this and that and the other and they're comparing their lives to other people. Father, I bind the adversary that would cause them to think little and to think nothing of themselves and your plan. Open their eyes to see. Let the joy of the Lord be their strength. Give us an expectation of good and a peace that passes all understanding. Guard our hearts and our minds. We thank you for it even now. We receive it done in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are a healer. Thank you that healing is the children's bread. We're your children, so feed us with healing today. Heal our bodies. Heal our minds. Heal our worry. Heal us every place we hurt. We thank you for it and receive it done in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that you're ordering our steps into greatness and that your plan will be fulfilled in our lives. We receive it done in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my time is gone. Hey, Krishan. Good morning, everybody who just popped on. If I missed you, sorry, sorry, sorry. God bless you. Many, many, many fold over. Thank you for those of you who host watch parties. Remember this. I want you to understand. I know that there are plenty of, of people doing Facebook Lives, and I appreciate your coming to this one, and I appreciate you sharing it. Thank you for the watch parties. Thank you all so much. Thank you for those of you who are sewing into my life. Got a little happy on yesterday from somebody who watches. Thank you so much for sewing. I believe that God will multiply your seed sown and increase you more and more. Thank you for that. And um, I let's see, what am I missing? So join me in the morning at 7.15 and we'll look again into another uh, point to help us get to our next. I'm looking for great things in 2020. I'm looking for great things in 2020. I look for great stuff in 2019 too, but I'm looking for greater. All right, time's gone. Join me in the morning and we'll look again. And remember this, time spent in the word of God is never wasted and you've been graced for today. Have a great day. Pray for somebody. Peace, y'all.